Well, good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel High Church from wherever you might be for a time of worship this morning. Today is Sunday, June 11th, the second Sunday after Pentecost. And before we get started, here are our morning announcements. Let's see. On Wednesday, um, we will be having our monthly lunch and learn uh, on Wednesday. On Thursday, we will be having our monthly lunch and learn at noon. I hope you will come in and uh, make a fan with me each uh, lunch and learn during the summer. We're doing crafts. And this first one is going to be church fans. So I hope you'll come have lunch with me. Uh, it lunches on us. And uh, if you're free at noon, come on in, make a craft, have some fellowship and stay for lunch. There's a sign up in the back. So if you're planning to come, uh, please put your name down just to make sure we have enough food for all of you. And if you're at home and you hear this, call the church and let us know you're coming. Next Sunday is Father's Day. Uh, so we will be celebrating fathers. And then on the following Sunday, we will be celebrating our graduates and handing out milestones. So I hope that everyone will be able to come for that celebration. On July 16th, we're going to be worshiping out uh, at Doylestown Memorial Park for our annual church picnic and worship outside. And then come on back later that day on the 16th at 4 p.m. New Horizons will be playing uh, the band right out in our cemetery. So I hope you'll all be able to come back for that. Um, if you want to sign up for VBS, whether you are participating or would like to sign up as uh, a volunteer to help out, that is going to be July 30th through August 1st. And then finally, our outdoor movie is coming up. It'll be on the 18th of August. Are there any other announcements for the good of the group? All right. Oh, and blessing of the backpacks will be on the 20th as well. Very good. Plus, I would be remiss if I, as Sandy's giving me the eye, there's a, she's like, am I? Uh, there's a sign up for the rubber ducks. If you haven't signed up on August 20th in the afternoon, um, we are going to go as a group uh, to see the rubber ducks. It'll be a beautiful day. If we get 24, uh, we'll get a discount. Tickets will be $12 a piece. So uh, I hope you'll all attend and bring your friends. Uh, there's a sign up for that as well. So now let's take a moment and transition into our time of worship, shall we? Each week we prepare ourselves for worship by reminding our minds and our bodies that even though some of us are still physically in our homes, we're now gathering as the body of Christ and we're entering on to holy ground. And we've been doing this each week by doing breath prayers. We do this by relaxing and slowing down and just reminding our minds and bodies that we're right here. Let's start our breath prayer. Let's place our right hand on our hearts and our left hand on our bellies and start breathing in slowly through our nose. And as we breathe in, let's think, Lord, I will follow. And as we breathe out, for I'm blessed to be a blessing. Breathe in, Lord, I will follow. And out, for I am blessed to be a blessing. Once more, Lord, I will follow, for I'm blessed to be a blessing. All right, let's now turn to worshiping our God as we bring in the light of Christ and we listen to our prelude. <laughs>
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. The sinners, the saints, the broken, the whole. The doubters, the devout, the wanderers, the wanderers. The hesitant, the heroic, the grandparents, the little children. Creation sinks to the one, gives life and peace. Please join me in the opening prayer. Generous God, you gave us our voices, no two the same, as you did with Abraham and Sarah. You take the touch our lives and they can become extraordinary. And in your church, you have gathered us in your community of common folk and complainers, prophets and puzzled people. You have called us and made a place for us. So let what we say and do here, what we ponder and decide here, be real for us and honest to you as you prepare us for the life of the world in which you are praised. Amen. <laughs> For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great 
is God's steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is a book that some of you may want to consider buying. Grandparents, mostly I'm talking to you. I know we are the book buyers. It's called Growing in God's Love, a Story Bible. And it has stories with questions and beautiful pictures. And Pastor Gay can give you the title if she, if you need to know it later again. This is from Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapters 12 and 17. Sometimes this is called Abram and Sarah, I Find a New Home. Sometimes families move. <clears throat> they move from one neighborhood to another. They move from one city to another. They even move from one country to another. When families move into one country from another country, we call them immigrants. That's what Abram and Sarai were, immigrants. They lived in Haran where their families had always lived. They knew everyone and everyone knew them. They lived the lives they had always lived and they did the work their families had always done. They were comfortable in Haran. Then God came up with a new plan for them. One day, God said to Abraham and Sarai, I want you to move to a new country. I've got a new home for you there. I've got a new life for you there. I've got new work for you to do. I want you to live in a new country and work there. Just by living there and doing good, you will make everyone's lives better. Abraham and Sarai must have been worried about moving. It's hard to leave what you know but they left right away for their new country, the land of Canaan. Like all immigrants, they must have felt strange there at first. They must have felt alone. They must have worried what would happen to them in this new place. But when they got to their new country, God met them there. God said to them, I'm going to give you a family. They'll live in this new country and call it their own. They'll make a home for themselves here because you're starting a new family in a new land. I'm giving you new names, Abram, you'll now be called Abraham. Sarai, you'll now be called Sarah. So Abraham and Sarah started all over in their new country, just like many immigrants do today. They had a new place to live. They had new names. They had a new family. And before too long, they began to feel at home. Um, do you, have you ever met any anyone from a new country and learned about their, their, new la their old language or their... Um, Oh, right, right, Vaughn. A new language, new um, customs they had, new foods they ate. It's very interesting. And if you can do that to someone you meet who's from a new country, you become a blessing to them. This morning, if you recall, in our breath prayer, we said, Lord, I will follow, for I'm blessed to be a blessing. Um, if you'll pray with me, please. Loving God, Open our hearts to new people and new ways. Help us remember we are all God's children. Amen.
Our first lesson comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 33, verses 1 through 12. Listen as the Spirit speaks. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. May God bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. Listen now to the word for God's people. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And the ones who curse you, I will curse. And in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot, Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old. When he departed from Haran, Abraham, Abram took his wife, Sari, and his brother, son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the Oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel, and he pinched, pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed by, on by stages toward the Negeb. This is the word for God's people. May he bless all who hear it and who share it. Let us pray, shall we? Holy One, be with us in these coming moments. May the words that I'm about to speak and the ponderings of those gathered here be true to your will for us, Lord. Amen. You know, it was almost 10 years ago that I came to this 
congregation that you called me here as your pastor. That was a time of prayer and discernment for you as a congregation, as well as for me. And it made me think as I read this, was God calling me to this place? What does it mean anyway to be called by God? And how do we know when God is calling us somewhere? I suspect that many of you too have gone through a similar process when you've moved or made a major life decision. Seeking God's will for your life, spending time in prayer and conversation, weighing together all the factors, both positive and negative. I start this way this morning because I think it's a good way to begin thinking about our story today, about the call given to Abram and Sarah. Because think about it, they didn't have an opportunity to check out ahead of time the place that they were going. They just left home with all their questions, trusting that God would provide the answers for them. This is one of the most important stories in the Old Testament. It's our origin stories. And scholars think it's the hinge on which the whole book of Genesis rests. It's the story that gives birth to three of our current religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And the story starts, let's remember, with the call of God. It goes like this. Now, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I'll show you. So now those of us who are married can imagine how we'd feel if one day our spouse came and announced that he or she had heard the voice of God and that we should just pack our bags and take off. People claim, people who claim that they hear voices from God or what? And we, we're a little suspicious of them, aren't we? That's, that's not what we do in our more modern day. And then add to that, that Abraham and Sarah were told to leave their home and all that was familiar and to move to a place they'd never been, unsure of what they'd find when they got there. And truth be told, that takes a lot of courage, doesn't it? Because most of us want to have all our questions answered before we make a decision of that magnitude. We Google it, don't we? We, we, we Zillow it. We cover our bases. I know I did before I came here. I looked and tried to find as much as I could about this church, looking at your website, learning about your former minister, seeing if I knew anyone here. Now, our story today doesn't tell us whether Abraham and Sarah agonized over this decision or not. It simply says they responded obediently. It says, so Abraham went as the Lord had told him. They trusted God and the promise that God had given them. Hebrews 11 says this about Abraham and Sarah. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. It's no wonder that Abraham is called the father of a nation. He trusted God to keep the promise and his faith changed everything from then on. That's why I love this story about Abraham and Sarah. You know, sometimes we read the Bible and we have a hard time thinking of the people in the Bible as real. And we just, you know, they're just fairy tale stories. It's like Mother Teresa sometimes. We stand in awe of her, but we know in our hearts that we could never be like her or do what she did. And the people of the Bible are the same way. A lot of times they get so much holy smoke surrounding them that we can't see that they were just broken and flawed, just like us. The Bible says that Abraham was 75 years old when God called him, and Sarah was 65. Now, 
I've heard that they were both well past their prime, but those of us who are past 65, I don't know, I take a little exception with that. Yet God called them and used them anyway. He didn't call a millennial. He didn't call a Gen Xer. He didn't call a teenager. He didn't call somebody young and beautiful. He called those who were willing to say yes. The story of Genesis 12 goes on to say then that even though Abraham was over 75, he still did some shameful things to save his own skin later on. He wasn't perfect. And yet God still used him. At the end of the book of Joshua, it says this about Abraham. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago, your ancestors, Terah and his son, Ab sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. In other words, God didn't choose Abraham and Sarah because they were all good and worthy and religious already. In fact, when God called them, they were serving other gods. They weren't even serving God himself. That's why I love this story, because I find that Abraham and Sarah are people just like you and me. They're imperfect people. They're broken. They're flawed. People who spend too much time chasing after other gods. And yet God still chooses them to call and use imperfect people like us again and again and again. And God has called each one of us in the waters of baptism, called us to be his children, called us to follow his son, Jesus Christ and to trust God's promises to us. God calls us and sends us out into the world as still imperfect people, but with a wonderful story to tell about a God who loves us and forgives us as imperfect people and who keeps his promises with them no matter what. So what's God's will for your life? What's God calling you? to do maybe you're at a point in your life where you're asking the same question this morning maybe it's a decision about a move or a relationship or a career change sometimes you know god's will seems so obvious we know exactly where we're headed and exactly what god wants us to do but then there are those other times when we just aren't sure where we're going we can't see the future and we don't have a clue. And it's especially at those times that we walk by faith and not by sight. We live the questions and wait for the answers. But as we walk, this much we do know. In the waters of baptism, God made a covenant with us, a covenant that God will never break. God has called us to trust that promise and to follow Jesus and to journey with him. And he promises if we do that, we'll have a new and abundant life that will bless not just us, but everyone we encounter. And God has called us, every one of us in this room, to go and share the good news with others. And maybe that means leaving home. For most of us, though, leaving home will be a different kind of journey than we might expect. It might mean leaving all the safe and comfortable places to journey somewhere outside our comfort zone. A journey that, well, Google Maps and Zillow won't ever be able to show us. Maybe it's a journey you'll take with a counselor to explore the issues that been, you've been troubled with your whole life. Or maybe it's a journey to make new discoveries in your Bible or through prayer. Maybe it's a journey across the hall at school or work to share comforting words with someone you can see that's hurting. It's a journey of faith. 
But as we go, we trust God's promises that it will be a journey filled with God's blessing. I'd like to share with you one of my new favorite prayers that could well have been written by Abraham and Sarah. It's called the prayer of good courage. And maybe this will be our prayer for this week. Let's pray. Lord, you've called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. By paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and that your love supports us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And all God's people said, Through this invitation to share our gifts, we acknowledge that God has blessed us abundantly and that we are to be a blessing to the world. In a very act of giving, in every act of bestowing blessings on another, we find that we are blessed yet again. I encourage you now to enter fully into this amazing cycle of blessing. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, you shower us with gifts, including the greatest gift of all, your own son, Jesus Christ. In thanksgiving and praise, we offer you our time, our money, our very selves. In these actions, we proclaim our intention to be a blessing in your world. Amen. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. movement in hearts and lives, we would rather stay where we are. We want your calling to mean that we're already doing what we should be doing. And we want your love to mean 
that all we do is approved, that our failings are ignored. We want your power to sanctify us, to mean that you're finished with us and that we're complete as we are and we can resist changing in any way. We don't want to move. We don't want to be moved. And we know that you will move us, will be uprooted, called out, sent out into strange country, shaken, turned, pushed, and pulled. So we plant our feet in solid ground, stiffen our necks and cross our arms, knowing if we were uprooted in you, we would be moving already. Lord, we ask that we, you bring us close, embrace us, surround us, be present in us and with us so that when you move, we move. When you move, we move. Today, we lift up to your healing care, Diane, Larry, Ernie, and Sue. Lord, in your mercy. We remember Lucy, Sally, and Sandy. Lord, in your mercy. We lift Zach, Chad, Roger, and Kay, Lord, in your mercy. And we remember Bonnie, Virginia, Dylan, and Bob Steele, Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, because we know no prayer is too small for you, this morning we lift up Please bring the weather to be beautiful until five o'clock today. So it may be a blessing for John and Juliana. Be with them this morning and this entire day and with the entire Huck Reedy family and with the entire Pedroza family. Help us celebrate with them this beautiful day as those two children embark on their new lives together, following you so that when you move, they move. We ask all of this in the name of our teacher and our brother, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise if you're able and join me in one of our favorite songs, Just a Closer Walk With Me.
Let us go forth this day, knowing that we go blessed by God. We go into the world ready to be a blessing to all we encounter. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you. 